Um, hello, and welcome to Never Wear Abridged, the show that happens sometimes, mostly not, but I would like to finish this book with y'all, and uh, we're about halfway through it. We're opening on chapter nine. Chapter nine doesn't open with the Marquis or Richard or Dor. It opens with Jessica. Jessica was Richard's girlfriend at the beginning of the book. And she is stressed. So she's throwing this big party. She's nervous. She's jittery. She's throwing a party for this very demanding guy. And she's stressing about the fact that every little detail basically is on her shoulders. And if it doesn't go well, it reflects badly on her. So she loves her work. And just the pressure of it is just riding on her. And it's funny because she thinks to herself it's good that she doesn't have a boyfriend because she wouldn't have time for one. Which is funny, knowing that she opened the story, you know, with a boyfriend. Anyway, so she's running around micromanaging, checking on things. Food, champagne, water. So she's just running around doing her job, making sure everything's the way it should be. Um, the string quartet's warming up. The party's getting in full swing. And Mr. Stockton's driver phoned from the car. They're running late. Um, so Jessica's like, oh, the guy says it's nothing to worry about. And Jessica's repeats that to him. But in her head, she's thinking, oh, shit, doomed. Everything's going wrong. It's a disaster and it's all on her. So she's externally, she's very cool as a cucumber. Internally, she is freaking out. So Mr. Stockton wants a private viewing with all of the art to himself. But he's not there yet. And everyone else is because the party already started. And the people are getting restless, like they want the party to go on and proceed, and he's holding everything up. Um, so Jessica's stressing, and they're like, we need to open the doors and let the people in to see this art. And she doesn't want to let them in yet because he wants his viewing, so she's struggling with that. And um, so finally, the doors do end up opening, even though she tries to not have them open. And the crowd comes in, which of course stresses her out even more, because she was trying to let him get that viewing in that he wanted. So she's upset, and then we cut over to Richard's perspective, and he is freaking out because the guards are cornering him and Dor, and they're like, oh no, we're going to get caught, and then the guards are sitting there talking to each other, there's two of them, and they're not even looking at Richard and Dor. So they walk right by them, they're, these two guards are having this conversation, stare right at Richard, but like through him like he's not there, and... Richard is like, what the hell? Why can't they see me? This is so weird. We're right here. And Dora is like, that's what happens when you're from the underground, when you're from London below. When you're from the below, people from the above can't see you. And Richard's like, but I saw you when you were hurt. And she's like, yeah, it's super fucking weird, right? <laughs> and Richard's like, everything's super fucking weird. Which it is. It's almost like this is a fantasy story. <laughs> so... Door is like, we need to go over here. The Angelus is in that room. And it's the room the music's coming from. Which is... Dun, 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 Jessica's party. <laughs> so the, ex the exhibition is called Angels Over England. Which, it's a giant-ass party in this giant-ass art gallery. And all of the art is about angels. <laughs> there are... Um, the room is completely filled with angels. Statues, paintings, frescoes, huge, tiny, stiff, amiable. They're just like paragraphs about angels. <laughs> um, Dora is like, why is Richard being weird? Because Richard saw Jessica and now he is freaking out. And uh, Richard is like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I did know her. She, we were going to be married. That was my fiance. We were together when I met you, and then my life went insane, and now I apparently don't exist. Uh, and uh, so Richard's having this, like, mental crisis because he's seeing Jessica, and Dora is, like, very confused, and she wants to say something because she realizes, like, this is very important to, to him, but she doesn't know what to say. So she kind of just thinks for a minute, and the best she can come up with is, well, she's very clean, which <laughs> she is. And that's great. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Jessica's lots of things. She's smart and beautiful and competent and anxious and uh, kind of a 
bitchy, I guess, too, and kind of self-centered, but it's, like, in a way, because she wants to be ambitious. I don't know. I'm, I don't think she's a bad person, even if she's not my favorite person. She's fine. She's a good side character. Okay, so Richard's worried that Jessica will see him and freak out, and Dora's like, no, no one can see us. Don't worry. So Dora's excited because this party has fancy food and drinks. So Dora's stuffing her face, going to town. She's fine. Richard is very weirded out about the Jessica thing. So then we switch to Jessica's perspective and she's confused. She notices them, but she doesn't. And she's having a hard time focusing on them because of the whole magical nonsense. Um, and then finally it gets to the point where she can't ignore them. So she asks Clarence, the other guy who's working with her, um, about who those people are. And Clarence is like, can't even notice them at first. And that's that whole underground thing going on. And then Richard and Dor are looking for the angel. And Dor is like, well, it's like playing spot the pigeon. And, like, there's always a shit ton of pigeons. <laughs> Actually, she says spot the pigeon in Trafalgar's Trafalgar. I can't say the word. and I don't want to say it. But I've butchered every other word. Um, Like, I couldn't pronounce the Tim Thames whatever I, nobody is here for my pronunciation and I'm not sure why anyone's here but uh <laughs> Jessica comes over and wants to know why they're crashing her party and Richard is very weirded out about how well he knows Jessica and it's kind of weirding him out how that she doesn't know him so he kind of messes with her and starts saying stuff about her that no stranger would know. And it makes her angry. Because the fact that he knows this, her birthday, how old she is. Um, and the fact that she likes to hum, I'm a believer. When she's in, as he puts it, the throes of passion. like she, Which is creepy. Like, if a stranger came up and said that to you, you'd be fucking pissed. Like, why are you... Like, you... Are you a fucking stalker? Like, Jessica's weirded out and angry. She doesn't know who these people are. And Richard's kind of having this mental breakdown of, like, realizing Jessica has no idea who he is. And he is just making it worse and worse. He starts singing. <laughs> He's yelling about that she dumped him and he doesn't exist. And he starts singing, I'm a believer. I couldn't leave her if I tried. Like, Richard's making this horribly worse than it needed to be. Instead of using the fact that no one can remember him to his advantage, he is kind of freaking out and <laughs> freaking Jessica out by freaking out. And then Jessica gets so uncomfortable, she grabs a glass of champagne and storms off. And then she walks back over to where Clarence is, and he's like, oh, who was that guy that you are talking to? And she's like, I have no idea, but you should call security. <laughs> so things are going terribly, as they are wont to do for Richard. And then we go over to Mr. Stockton. So he likes making people uncomfortable. He's a businessman, he's very important, and this is his party, and he's ready to make his speech now that he's here. So, Mr. Stockton gets up to take, uh, to talk to Jessica and to get up on the, the little speaking platform area bit where the microphone is and give a speech. And then security is there, because security is like, oh, we need to get rid of these people for you. And Jessica's like, yeah, get rid of them. And then... Behind where the speech is happening, there's a curtain, and they open it up, and there's this big, giant, ornate, old-ass door. So that's part of the display, and it was being covered till now. And then Dora's is like, that's definitely the Angelus. And Jessica's egging on security to catch Richard and Dora. Dora's egging, egging on Richard, we need to get the Angelus, which is in front of all these people, because it's, it's where this guy is trying to give his speech. So... There, it's kind of like this race against like the crowd of getting to the get to that door, but also the security's trying to get to them, but also nobody really realizes what's going on because they're all here just ready for a speech. And Dora reaches out and uses her magic to open it, and they get to go through it. Um, <laughs> and by the time that it happens and they disappear, no one can remember what happened to where Jessica doesn't even know why the security was in the room anymore, <laughs> which is kind of sad because. It really solidifies that none Jess, to Jessica, Richard doesn't exist anymore. But it's also, you know, good that they got away and got through the magical glowy light door. And we meet our angel. 
we meet Islington. And they don't, they just use its with a capital I to describe Islington. Like, its voice was quiet, it said, it nodded. So Islington doesn't have a gender because it's a magical angel being. And I guess angels don't have genders or pronouns because it's just it. Anyways, there's candles. They light when they walk by them. It's magical. I don't want to talk about gender pronouns. I'm not. It's not the point of what we're talking about. So Richard and Dora found the angel. And here we are. And then we scene change. And we scene change to the marquee. He is digging through garbage. And walking through garbage. <laughs> oh, it's Mr. C and Mr. V's hideout. Um, and he's walking through broken glass and old syringes, crunching under his black boots. Um, he goes down to meet Mr. C and Mr. V. And he is, And the last line of the chapter is, Hello, boys. I thought at high time I came down here to talk to you in person. <gasps> Is the Marquis the mysterious man that's been giving them orders? Is the Marquis a traitor? Is the angel useful for things besides lighting candles and unlighting them by walking by them? We shall find out. But not right now. Right now is the end of chapter 9. And we... Thanks for listening.